They say the greatest fear we have is of public speaking. It's the number one fear in the world. The second greatest fear is the fear of death. So if we think about that for a minute, we're more scared about making the eulogy at our funeral than we are at actually being in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly are we afraid of? We're afraid of being judged. Making a mistake. And not measuring up. I think we all have this internal perfectionist. The one who says, that's not right for me. The one who says, Mark Basto is doing it so much better, or would do it so much better than you would. And the worst thing is that I think Mark Basto and all of you have got an internal perfectionist as well. Not for yourselves, but for me. Now Susan Jeffers says, if you've got a fear, face up to it and do it. And I would totally agree with that. Face your fear. And do it, and do it, and do it, and do it. If we look at the benefits of public speaking, it increases our self-confidence, makes us more comfortable with people, is a career booster, helps us persuade people, and increases our communication skills, not just with our family, but with our friends and with our colleagues. I remember I'm, I'm a life coach and psychotherapist, and I remember the first life coaching course I did. The lecturer stood up and said, in every one of us, we should have an equal amount of confidence and competence. And if you imagine the old-fashioned balance, they should balance like that. But the hardest thing to teach in the whole world is confidence. And public speaking is a way of teaching yourself that. Learning how to become an effective public speaker is the key factor between success and failure. If you just think about that, it's the key factor between success and failure. In your life, in your, at your home, at work, and in the community. It's a big claim. What is it that we're so, so afraid of standing up? We're afraid because of the jitters, the nerves, the bad butterflies. And they're the hardest to hide. For me personally, there was where I had to begin. I could stand, in a former life I was a teacher, and I could stand in front of how many children, didn't matter, but put in one adult there and I went to pieces. And I remember well the day I decided I had to do something about it. I was doing a sports league as I always did at work. And it came to presenting the medals time. Now try and picture this, a small hall with 470 children in it. And Marie standing at the top with all the medals ready to go and a little bit to say about everybody who had won it. No problem, 470 kids, pile them in, no problem. But the 34 adults that stood around the wall and I went to pieces, and I mean literally to pieces. My legs went shaking, my body shook, my head, my neck, my, my hands, the piece of paper I had in my hand. I had asked two members of the staff that I really, really trusted to give me some feedback on my presentation. And these were two adults that I totally trusted. So as I was standing up there feeling, oh my God, I'd really gone to pieces. Afterwards, I went to each of the adults and they told me my presentation was fabulous. There wasn't a sound in the room. How did I keep everything so quiet? 470 children and they were all glued to me. But how were my nerves, I said. A little nervous, they said, but nothing to worry about and certainly didn't take away from the presentation. You have no idea how delighted I was. Here, there, I had it all cracked. There it was, 
I was nervous, my whole body was shaking, but nobody saw it but me. How wonderful was that? Headed back to the classroom, delighted with myself on cloud nine. And Liam, this little boy that I was teaching, that I really, really had a good relationship with, comes up to the desk and says, Miss, that was really good. Thanks, Liam, I said. That's Miss, you are very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous, how do you know, Liam? It's every bit of you I was shaking. Oh. <laughs> so I learned two things that day. I learned, A, I had to do something about this. And B, if you want the truth, ask a child. <laughs> so I decided I had to do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. And where was I going to do that? I looked around and I saw the mission statement that Kieran read out at the beginning. I mean, where would you get something like that? Every individual member has the opportunity to develop oral communication and leadership skills, which in turn foster self-confidence and personal growth. And when a child is learning to walk, when a child is learning to walk, when he falls 50 or 60 or 80 times, he doesn't think to himself, hey, that's not for me. So the journey in Toastmasters has been a long one for me. But look, no shoes. I'm here, I've practiced, but I will stay going. And I would totally recommend joining a Toastmasters club for everyone. There's one near you. Look it up, join. It's the first step. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the only step. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.